Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Mike Giannoulis, who is going to talk with us today about how to scale your business. Mike, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you so much, Mike, for inviting me on. So glad to be here. You're welcome. And you know, I think that um, when you hear phrases like how to scale your business or how to take your business from this to that, um, there could be some very, very common um, foundational pillars that everyone would teach on. But the cool thing that I think is everyone like yourself will bring your own personal experience to it. So it will look and feel and sound completely different than the next person that says, I can help you scale your business because of your life experience, your business experience. So I'm excited to chat with with you. Um, give us a little bit of background on yourself and what led you then to talk about and learn from uh, your experiences on scaling business and growing. Sure. You know, I um, like the majority of people probably on this, uh, or, um, hearing this podcast, I started sort of young as far as just always having that dream to build my own thing, do my own thing. I was very, um, it was very tough for me at like the job side of things because I would get so bored so easily and and um, so from a very very young age I kind of started and, and I I have a whole story we have a lot of time for it but I start when I was about 19 or 20 I actually with a friend of mine started a dairy goat farm which is one of the <laughs> probably dumbest things that I that I ever did and we ended up having over 500 goats all of them pregnant at the exact same time um, wow. and I'm not a farmer type at all. I did more of the paperwork, but unfortunately I got dragged into the farmer side. So I was out there every single day and doing all these crazy things. And, and that one didn't really pan out. But anyway, I have that sort of a starting point from a, a very young age. And then when I got to be in my mid twenties, I finally found the internet and um, this is about 15 years ago now. So I started figuring out all that. And I got into the world of what's known as copywriting, which is you know, the people that, that write ads. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know that, that you could get paid to do that. I thought you only write, I think I always thought you write books or you write screenplays and that's it. You know, I, I didn't know there's all this other sort of non-fictional side of things too. And, 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 and ads. So I got into that and it was through that experience that I, that I developed that skill. And I was able to then start getting partnerships with people who would say, hey, you write everything, come up with the, uh, how we're going to sell it and the strategy behind that. And then either they would fund it or they would provide the product or the service. So, so I started to partner with a lot of experts um, who knew what they were trying to do, but they didn't know how to sell it. And that's how I got into it. And then because I was a guy that had, that had to write all the ads, you end up doing a lot of the things, you know, um, you, you end up being the one that has to figure out whenever things go wrong as to why they went wrong. Sorry if you hear that. There's a jet flying overhead. So sorry about that. But, hey, you know, that's the way it goes, right? Um, that's the world so, we live in. I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, so you exactly. got some good sound yeah. Defin- uh, damn. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was uh, quite the experience. And I ended up having to fix all the things that would go wrong in a campaign. And then also when things would go well, I'd have to fix the things that broke because things went well, like finance and customer service and operations and just all of that stuff. So you, you end up getting involved in everything or you, you generate um, leads and then the, and then the sales aren't there. So then I was like, okay, well, you know, let me talk to the sales team. Let's see what they're saying. Right. And it was through all of that, that I, that I can, that's where my background came from. And then I also am a very, um, uh, how would you say it? I like to uh, learn. So I continued going to school even as I grew and, and scaled companies as high as, um, I think my, my, my best, we, we, had, we, we hit just shy of 25 million in one year. But I, I was wow. through that, at that time frame, I actually was going to school part time and finished up my MBA. So, I'm pretty unique in the sense that I have a real world experience out there on the front lines, but then also I do have the MBA side of me, which 
my biggest takeaway from the NBA was the idea of viewing everything as a factory, as a process, and then how do you streamline and improve those things. So that's where uh, and that's where uh, my uh, background is. And so anyway, that was a long answer, but. That's a good a good answer because um, you take lessons that you've learned, and I find that it's interesting you didn't um, say, well, you know what? I started this business, grew it to you know multi millions of dollars, and then took. Well, you might have done that, but the whole genesis of what you began that explanation is, well, you know what? I learned copywriting, which is messaging, marketing, messaging, message to market. And then from that, I realized that I needed to also tweak this, fine tune that. So it's interesting that it's like that um, un- layers of an onion. You start peeling it back and peeling it back and you need more and more and more. And then that uncovers more and more things. So I really feel um, so that, that a, peop- a lot of people don't understand the power and necessity of that messaging. Um, you know, copywriting, uh, I feel like a lot of people think, oh, well, that's uh, for writing uh, offers on your website and ads and, and doing a big sales campaign. And that is an element of it. But I think that even more deep down in a company, the power of creating that message to market for your target audience to read, and then even more importantly, for your entire organization, your internal organization to understand and be able at the drop of a hat to go, oh, well, our company, right? So like, hey, what does your company do? Well, we, and then they stumble and bumble. So the salespeople must know that. And yeah, okay, people in accounts payable, and, and maybe they don't need it necessarily, but the, the salespeople, you must be saying the same things that really resonate with your target audience. So do you work with your companies to help them create that kind of messaging as well? Yeah. So, and and it's always what I love about it is it's such a it is always a unique thing. But yeah, the the biggest thing that I that I always start with when I when I work with other companies or 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 with my own companies is and, and that's kind of that's kind of right now where I'm at. We're we're starting to acquire companies and then just fix them from the inside out and then either sell them or just take the you know cash flows, but, but what, one of the biggest things is, and I'm a firm believer in this, is like the real truth is in asking questions. And so we always start with, you know, who, who, who do we serve? What do we sell? And then you always, you know, then you get these sort of service answers. Well, we serve people. Okay. Well, what kind of people are or we sell? Uh, or, you know, we sell a product doing X. Okay. Well, that's just the name of the product. And but, but what's it actually do? And so we we dive down, like you had said earlier, the whole onion thing, and we and we peel away until we get to sort of the core. And it's not always easy, but and it, and it, and it for sure takes time, and you're not always going to be right the first time. But you you continue to ask and to seek and to and, and to ask further, and then ultimately, yes, we we end up with coming up with sort of almost like a statement, you know, where, that would just say, you know, this is who we are, this is what we believe, this is what we do, this is why we do it, this is how we help people. And you, you'd be amazed at, well, you probably not because you, you deal with this too, but so many companies who really don't know those things, just very, very basic things, or they know, the, they know it conceptually, but they haven't truly dealt with it practically. And, and I think a, a, big, a big way, especially if you're the owner and it's gotten to the point where you're not as involved on any of the customer facing things is just talking to your actual customers, getting feedback from them, asking them, they'll, they'll give you the best copy. Like I always say that like great copy writers don't, don't write, they steal, but they steal from the customers who tell them what to say. Um, And that's powerful because when they, when you can put it in the words that they use, then you're going to resonate with that core audience like never be- before. So it's it's truly a great if you're if you're going to write ads, the the best thing that you can do is go on the hunt for your customers to find out what they're saying, what are the problems that they think you're solving, because that's the true problem that that you're solving, not what you think it is, but what they think it is. So yeah, that's yeah. A big key there. And then what I would even say, um, have you ever read the book by Ryan Levesque called Ask? Yes. 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 Really good book, really good concept. Um, 
uh, and it just te- teaches you to do what you just mentioned, which is how do you sell more to your target audience? Ask your current customers. And then the, the magic is using the same words that your target o- or your customers are using because, you know, birds of a feather flock together. And if your customers are saying, well, I like this or it made me feel this or what, you know, using those same words are probably going to resonate with um, your target audience who have never bought from you, but, but you're listening to what, what they have to say and you're using that in your, in your marketing messaging. And I think that's a really big aha. Um, and another, uh, another thing is this, um, I know a lot of, of, of people, business owners, marketers would feel like, Oh, if I could just get these, um, you know, 17 questions answered. So, Hey, fill out this survey. Well, I've, started surveys before in the past and you answer six, seven, eight questions and you look up at the top and you go, you're 12% done. And I'm like, close it done. So I would say, figure out the top three, four, five questions. And that's ask those and, and just say, Hey, could I get your penny real quick? Because, um, I, I've got these four questions. I just, it'll take you 10 seconds to answer. And they would just really help us out. And you click the link and boop, boop, boop questions. And, and there it is. So now your 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 audience is understanding that you're not going to ask a lot of their time, and that's a really big point, right? Yes, that's huge. Yeah, people, we we often want, you know, obviously we want all the, you know, uh, answers that we can get, but everything in life, honestly, is a trade off, right? So in a perfect world, yeah, you would get them to answer 30 or 40 things, but we know that's just not the way people are. So, you know, you can go after, like, we try to go after like a, like we would say like a big five, you know, which is like, you know, what are like the five ones that you truly want to get? Because we've seen, we can push it to about 10, but you just not, you're going to see drop off. I think somewhere around five is pretty fair. And you obviously, you know, a great a great one to get is the one that, that, that I'm sure you've, you know, talked about before on the show, but the whole net promoter score, right? And that is just, would you refer your friends and the family? And, you know, a scale of one to 10 and, and, and you, as the higher that can be, the better. And that's sort of a roundabout way to, to get at the way people truly feel about your brand. And that's something else that I'll speak on real quick because I've, this is something that I've gone through myself, even just personally. And that is, I kind of jokingly say like I was baptized in the river of direct response. So I grew up in that sort of like direct response, write those long form sales pages, Mm -hmm. make the sale, make the sale, make the sale. And I used to always think, Oh, brands are stupid. They don't sell anything. They're just, rich or they can afford it, you know, but as I've gotten, as I've gotten older and I'm seeing a shift, I truly think the answer is in sort of combining the branding side of it with the direct response side. So there's nothing wrong with asking for a, a direct action, you know, opt in here or buy my program or schedule an appointment. You know, I think you need those things. I think at the same time as well, you, you, you also should focus on creating a brand experience that's comfortable for the audience and you shouldn't use tactics that in some way diminish them or take away from their ability to, you know, you know, not, I don't know. I just think that before I, I would be more apt to use uh, fear based tactics and things like that, that yeah. work. But at the same time, I think they take a toll on the brand. And so I've shifted away from that quite a bit. Well, and I feel like um, two things you said makes me think of a a really good teaching point here, which is um, if you use fear tactics, that's a common marketing slash copywriting approach. And I would say that's fine to do if it's a little F, like little fear, like just mention it, touch on it. Don't don't focus on it because now people are looking at your brand as, you know, someone that is not making them feel great. And yeah, you're trying to make them not feel great about this problem that you can solve. But I think that with honesty and ethics and a authority and authenticity, all these things, you want your brand to be viewed as someone that is trustworthy. So um, what I would recommend is when you do that research with your current customers and you're getting their feedback to use, watch for the the triggers uh, for the buyer's journey. What are the three to four main 
questions or concerns that your target audience must understand about your product or service so that when they do understand it and you're the one that explains it to them, they go, wow, Mike, that was, I just hadn't thought of that before. That is amazing. Thank you. That's really good stuff. Now, what was it that you said that, oh, good, you've got this, good. So when you have that buyer's journey, those questions, and you're answering them very carefully and honestly and, and pointing out the pros and cons and like, for instance, hey, you might not um, want to use our product or service if this or, um, or or just being very transparent. And I think when you lay that out that way and, and, and the buyer or the prospect is able to make a decision on their own, you win because it's been said, I've heard it from Jeffrey Gittimer, people love to buy, but they don't want to be sold. So talk a little bit about creating that um, authenticity by really helping to teach the audience on how to make the decision um, uh, to buy or not to buy your product or service. Yeah. So, and again, this will all, you know, as as I say, it's it's unique for each person. But in general, what I've what I've really seen and, and what I've been able to do, and, and and it works exceptionally well, and that is getting away from the idea of you being a salesperson and and you know or selling and thinking more about being an educator. So. Yep. What I've seen is, is if you truly the, – the greatest way to show people that you know what you're talking about is to show them that you know what you're talking about, right? So, and, and this is where webinars and things like that, why they work and, and still do, they're not as effective as maybe 10 years ago just because there are so many more of them. But, but the, the whole idea is people want to learn things. They want to learn about things. Now, when you're selling like you know, e-com type stuff, it's not quite as – as easy, but if you're doing any kind of coaching, consulting courses, this makes a ton of sense. And it, it's crazy because I still have not found that theoretical line where it stops. Like, by, and by that I mean you could sit there and teach and give away 99.999 percent of everything you know, and it'll only make people want to pay you more because they don't. Yeah. Most people don't want to. to solve the problem themselves. They want that help. And they know yes. that by you teaching general principles and they're going, wow, this, this person, you know, they're very, very smart. That's, that's great. I bet they can help me solve X problem. So on that side of the fence, it's, it's powerful just to teach and educate. And, you know, you can tease stuff as well. If you, if you enjoy this, you'll love my whatever, but, yep. but that's, but that's such a great way to sell these days, especially with the with you know the way things have gone with social media, right? It's all about content and sharing things, and um, you know, so it's it's truly. I think back in the day, earlier on in the internet, it was like, okay, well, I have this you know secret info that I'm gonna hold back. Nowadays, it's pretty much like, hey, I, here's everything I got. If if you didn't get the help for you, then let's uh, talk more. So that's that's one way that I've done it. So I, I I have a brand that I this is like my side 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 thing. I just do it more for fun than anything else. But it's called Copywriter of uh, a Brain, and that's pretty much what I do over there. I've 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 not run an ad to anything. I've I've done just just put up YouTube stuff. I I write, I write blog posts. And I've grown that company from scratch, and this is, this is not big at all, but just, to, you know, think about no investment in it. It's done about 10,000 10, in sales so far this, uh, in, in about the last four months, and we've grown to about 400 people on the email um, database and um, almost 200 subscribers on YouTube. And, and again, I'm building the base up for future. Yeah. And so I know a year from now, it'll probably be 10 times that. And that's fine. Yeah. But the cool part is, it's just been giving away content. And people just write you and say, hey, what else do you got? What else can I buy? Can you help? Can you yeah. solve this problem? Can, can you help with this? And, and that's been a, a big help. That, that's huge. And, and yeah, those numbers aren't astronomical, but guess what? That makes me think they're believable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you see yeah, these ones yeah. where it's like, we've got 4 trillion subscribers in the first minute. We, and I could show you how to do the same thing. No, you, those numbers you gave are like, 
that's pretty cool. That's that's believable. And and then yeah, I do think that over the next year it's gonna you know kind of compound upon itself. So um, that I think is another thing that goes into honesty and transparency. So yeah. um, let's just wrap up, Mike, with this. Um, if someone is interested in uh, reaching out, connecting with you, learning more about you know messaging, copywriting, scaling the business, what's the best way that uh, they can reach out, and connect with you? Yeah, so I actually put up a page just for people that are here on this uh, podcast now, and it's up at copywriterbrain.com slash IE. And if they go there, I believe there's three things there for them. Uh, one is I've got a webinar type thing that I do, and they can go and join it and ask questions, and I teach them how to be more creative. Um, I teach them how to use some of the modern tools to make it so you can write ads faster and easier than ever before. And I show them how to actually build a database of, of, of stuff that they can pull from whenever they need to write. So th that's all there. They, they also on that site will find all my socials and, um, and all you know, access to pretty much everything that I have. So that's copywriterbrain.com slash IE. And like 99% of everything I do is free. So it's all there for people. And I hope they go check it out. Awesome, Mike. Thank you so much for coming on today. It was great talking with you. Yes, thank you, Mike. I had a great time. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.